So what exactly is a special warranty deed and when does it make sense for you to use it? We're gonna cover that in the next few minutes. Whenever you're closing a real estate deal in-house, probably the most important document that you're gonna be working with is the deed. And as far as deeds go, there's a couple that most people have heard of. One of them is called a warranty deed. The other one is called a quit claim deed. And a warranty deed is basically when the seller is promising that there are no title defects of record and I will defend this going back to the very beginning of time. I promise this thing is totally free and clear and you are getting the unencumbered title to the property. So it's a pretty strong statement. A quick claim deed is where a person is saying, I'm gonna give you whatever title I have in this property if I have anything. So for example, I could give you a deed to the White House and I don't own anything and that's still okay. It's basically just saying, if I own anything of this property, it's now yours. For understandable reasons, a lot of title professionals really do not like quick claim deeds because it's not a very strong statement and the seller is not really making any promises of any kind. So a lot of times when a seller doesn't necessarily wanna make all the promises that come with a warranty deed, but they are willing to make a little bit more of a promise than a quick claim deed offers, that's when they might consider using what's called a special warranty deed. And a special warranty deed is basically just saying, during the time that I own this property, there were no title defects that came into play. What it's not offering any guarantees about is what happened to the title prior to their ownership. So if there was some issue that came up 20 years before this seller owned the property, that's not their problem. They're just saying that during that time period that they owned it, no issues came into play. So when you're selling a property and for understandable reasons, if either the buyer or their attorney or the closing agent says, no, we're not gonna accept a quick claim deed, that's not okay. If you ever encounter that, a special warranty deed is probably gonna be your best bet simply because it's offering some guarantee but not an unconditional guarantee. And you can actually word the special warranty deed to specify what kind of guarantees you're offering. And what I wanna do in this video is show you how to create a special warranty deed. So if you're ever closing a deal yourself and you wanna figure out how to do this, I'm gonna show you how to do it through a service here called Rocket Lawyer. And as you'll see, Rocket Lawyer has done an incredible job of just making it extremely easy to create these kinds of documents. It's literally just a questionnaire that it walks you through and you answer it with all the information you have and uh, it will generate the state specific documents and it's uh, extremely easy. Now keep in mind, I am not an attorney, so I'm not telling you if and when you should actually be using this. I'm just saying that if you decide on your own behalf or if your attorney tells you that this would be the right document to use, this is how you do it. And as you probably know, there are several places out there where you can get these kinds of blank special warranty deed templates, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it through Rocket Lawyer for the sake of this example, just because they make it really, really easy and this is the service I'm using now. So uh, let's jump into it and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so when you get to the Rocket Lawyer website, I'm actually gonna have a link right beneath this video to get to this screen here where you can start creating a special warranty deed. I'm also gonna include some links to create a warranty deed and a quick claim deed in case you wanna do one of those instead. And they all follow a very similar process that I'm gonna show you here. In this example, I'm gonna create a special warranty deed for a property in California. So we just click this uh, menu and then click California and then click make document. And then first of all, it's asking us, where is the property that is being granted? So this is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna enter in that property address. And then once that's in there, we would click continue. And the second question is asking where this original recorded deed should be sent back to after it's been recorded by the county. And the way I handle this is when I am buying a property and I'm closing it myself, I would put my information in here because I'm gonna be the new owner who actually receives this deed from the seller. When I'm selling it, I would put in the information of the buyer so that this would be sent to them after it's been recorded. So in this hypothetical example, I'm creating a deed for a property that I am selling. So I'm gonna get that buyer's information and plug that in here. So once that's in there, I'll click continue. And then who is granting the property? In this case, I'm gonna set this up for a property that I am selling. So I'm just going to uh, say that I am selling this on behalf of my business. And then the name of my business, I'll just put a hypothetical name in here. And keep in mind, if at any point in this process you wanna skip over one of these items, you just click skip. 
And what's going to happen is in the final copy of the document, it's just going to have a blank space there. So you could write in the information if you don't happen to know it right now. Um, and also keep in mind, if you come across anything in this process that you don't really understand what you're supposed to be doing and you're just kind of confused, you can ask an actual lawyer what you're supposed to do at any point right here in this box. I've done it before and it works pretty nicely. So once we've got that done, we'll click continue again. Then who will sign this special warranty deed for ABC Company? I'm going to put myself and I'm the manager. That's my title. And then what is the physical street address of the Grand Tour? I'm just going to put uh, my address in here again. And then I'll click continue. And then where will this Grand Tour sign the special warranty deed? The reason it's asking this is because this is the information that's going to go in the notary block. So again, I could just skip this and leave it blank and have the notary fill this in. But since I pretty much already know where I'm going to be when I sign it, I'll just go ahead and fill this out. And it's really just the county and the state where this signing is taking place. And then Grand Tours, if for some reason this was being sold by like two people, like a husband and wife, you could go ahead and like add another name so that both individuals would have to sign off. But since this is just being sold by my company, it's just, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll just leave ABC Company LLC on there like that. Click continue. And then what warranties will be made by this special warranty deed? With a special warranty deed, you're not necessarily guaranteeing that there are no issues whatsoever in the entire history of the property's title. But what you are saying is that there have been no issues that have come up during the time that you own the property. So really what this is saying is you can choose exactly what kind of warranty you're implying through the signing of this special warranty deed. According to this explanation here, we're going to want to choose at least one of these in most cases, but you're not usually going to pick all six of them. So you would just pick whichever ones clearly apply to your situation. So in this case, I'm going to check this one here and this one here as well. Again, if you have any questions on any of this stuff or if you're just not sure what some of these things mean, go ahead and ask a lawyer. If you're a paying subscriber to Rocket Lawyer, you have access to that if and when you need it. Click continue here. Okay, now what is the tax or assessor's parcel number of the property that's being deeded? Well, one way to find this information is to look at the most recent deed of record. It should most likely be on there. Or you can look it up on your county's website. So there is usually several different ways you can go about finding this. But uh, just for this example, I'm going to put a uh, random number in here. I'm just making this up on the spot. So once that's in there, I'll go ahead and click continue. And then this next section, what is the legal description of the property? The legal description is extremely important. This is something that you want to make sure you have exactly right. And the reason it's so important is because this is literally how the property is defined. Like this is saying the exact dimensions and where the property is located. This is something that really needs to be correct, so don't have any doubts about this. In terms of where you can find that legal description, you can usually find it on the most recent deed or deeds of record, and or you could go to your county website. A lot of times, if you know where to look there, they'll have it listed out uh, on the county website as well. So just uh, make sure you've got the exact right description, and it's usually a very confusing looking uh, line of, of words and numbers, something like this. So to just the normal person, this wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it, it does actually matter. This is what surveyors use when they put together surveys and draw out the meets and bounds of a property. So just trust me when I tell you, this needs to be right. It's very important. Once you got that in there, go ahead and click continue. Then who is being granted the property? Uh, in this example, we're going to say it's going to a single person and his name is John Smith. Click continue and then enter the physical street address of this person. So I'll go ahead and put that in here Then we'll click continue. And then grantees, again, if we were selling this to like a husband and wife or like two brothers or something like that, we could add additional names here as well. But since it's just going to one individual man, we're all set as it is. So we'll click continue. And then is money being given in exchange for the transfer of this property? Yes. And then how much money? We're going to say that we're selling this thing for... $25,000, so it should look like that. And then check the box of any statement that applies to this deed. This is another example of where Rocket Lawyer really starts to show its value. 
because what it's doing is knowing that we're dealing with a property in California, the system is recognizing that the transfer may be exempt from the California documentary transfer tax. So it's basically just giving us the option of checking one of these items if they apply. In my situation, none of these do apply, so I'm just gonna leave them all blank. But you know, if uh, for example, I was giving this as a gift, I could potentially save myself some money. So just keep that in mind. That's a nice thing to be aware of with Rocket Lawyer. And then right here, what is the value of the property being transferred? We're gonna say 25,000, click continue. And then is the grantee assuming any debts attached to this property? In every deal I do, this is pretty much never going to apply. But if, for example, you were selling a property with a mortgage attached to it and that buyer was gonna assume that mortgage, you could click yes. But again, that's rarely the case with me. So I'll just keep it as no like that. And then does the grantor wish to reserve any interest in the property's oil, gas, or other mineral rights? Depending on what part of the country you're in, this may or may not be a thing. I know in some states, oil and mineral rights are a big deal and people don't want to sell those. And in other places, it's not really an issue at all. So if for some reason you want to retain those rights, then this is your chance to say that you're not transferring those with the property. But in most of the areas where I work, I go ahead and just, you know, sell everything as part of the deal. So I'm just gonna keep this as no. And then does the grantor desire to receive a life estate interest in the property? This one never really applies to the deals that I'm working on, so I'm gonna leave this as no. Click continue. And then once this is done, we can get a little preview of the document we just created. And if we wanted to, we could go back and edit it again, or we could simply download it. We can download it either as a PDF or a text file or a Word document. Usually what I'll do is I'll download a Word document. And the nice thing about this is that I can get in here and edit things if I want to. And or I can use this template on future deals if I feel like doing some of this stuff the manual way. And as you can see, it's got all the information that we just put in there. And I would just sign a date this right here and then get it notarized at the bottom. And uh, that's really all there is to it. It's a pretty straightforward, simple document. And as you can see, it was very, very easy to create. I'm pretty sure a fifth grader could have gone through those same steps and done that. It's just not very difficult at all. And uh, again, Rocket Lawyer just does a really good job of making things as easy as they ought to be. So if Rocket Lawyer is something you want to put to work in your business, they do have a couple different pricing options available at the time of this recording. And you can pay for it monthly or yearly. Uh, and if you pay for it yearly, you obviously save a little bit of money. I'm currently doing this one right here, the premium monthly plan. And uh, it's been working out pretty well for me. And keep in mind, if you're somebody who like just does this kind of thing on occasion, it's always an option to sign up, create the documents you need, and then unsubscribe, and then come back again in the future when you need to use it again. You don't necessarily have to sign up and pay for every single month for life. So if you're somebody like me who's creating deeds and contracts like this on a somewhat regular basis, then it probably does make sense to just you know stay subscribed or do the yearly plan. But uh, just so you know, I mean, it's not like you have to be locked into a payment for the next 10 years. It's it's a lot more flexible than that. So just sort of keep that in mind. And uh, if you don't want to use Rocket Lawyer, if you got some other way to create these documents, that's totally cool too. Just want to make sure that you were aware of Rocket Lawyer. I just think it's a really convenient and quite honestly, a brilliant solution for real estate investors like you and me, because we got to do this stuff all the time. And especially if you're working in multiple different states that all have different laws and statutes that can change up these documents, Rocket Lawyer does a great job of making sure those changes are automatically reflected, regardless of where you're working. So yeah, that's Rocket Lawyer. And just for full disclosure, I do have an affiliate relationship with these guys. So I'm going to have a few links beneath this video. If you click on those links and if you sign up for a subscription through those links, I will get a small kickback from that. It's not going to cost you anything extra and it will help support the RE Tipster blog and uh, make sure that I'm able to continue creating this kind of content and bringing these kinds of videos to you. So if you decide to do that, thanks very much for your support. I appreciate it more than you know. And if not, I wish you all the best with your alternative solution. Thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.